Oh, I want to show you one of the attachments you'd find in these wooden puzzle boxes that came with these machines. This machine is a fiddle base, they call it, because of that curvy base. It's a VS2, which means it has a vibrating shuttle on a bullet, bullet type shuttle in it. And I want to tell you a little bit about this beautiful machine that I have. Uh, I was very lucky to find her. The woman I bought her from, this was her mother's machine. Um, and obviously, mom didn't use it a lot. And the woman I bought it from, she said she never sewed. So I was very fortunate to find this machine that is almost virtually brand new, even though she's 123 years old as of this year, which is 2014. And um, it's just so pretty. She's in her original walnut treadle cabinet. And everything on this machine is original, and this is how I got her. So I really feel fortunate to have one in such beautiful decals in perfect condition that is really, truly original and that old. So I'll be sewing with her today, and this attachment box would have come with these machines in the early days. Uh, apparently the wooden puzzle boxes only came with machines sold in the United States. They didn't sell these in Europe for some reason when they came out. So we'll look at these attachments here. And today we're going to look at this one here, which is the number 12 ruffler. This has a 12 on it, and it, it shows up in the early manual. This is an 1889 manual uh, image, and it's, that's the very same ruffler attachment in there, the number 12. And says on the attachment 12 and, and it says patented in 1888 so this is one of the really early ones and in the box you'll find this little plate here and this is the shearing plate the shearing plate is used with this particular ruffler so these two were used together and I'm going to show you how to do those later on but let's look at the attachment here you know basically um, rufflers are pretty similar uh, with blades on them that grab for ruffling. Some have one blade, some have two. Most of the Singer um, lock stitch machines will have two blades underneath. This is a blue steel, spring steel type blade. And one is underneath and the bottom is smooth and the one on top has teeth on it that grab the fabric to create the ruffle. So basically, these came with adjustment screws and that adjusts the amount of bite for the ruffle. Then they have an arm that's a forked arm uh, that moves the, the ruffler blades down below. And those go onto the needle clamp area. Fork does that arm and that's what moves things. And this particular ruffler has this little screw here, which is specifically for using as for ruffling. And then you move this back and forth depending on if you're ruffling or if you are shearing. Uh, so when you're shearing, you move it forward. When you're ruffling, it's moved back. So forward for shearing. You tighten that screw down, depending upon what you're doing. And when you're shearing, that tooth blade, that upper tooth blade, works in conjunction with this little plate. And I'll show you how to do that. That covers the feed dogs. We'll do this later. So let's start by showing you basically putting these on your machine. You remove your standard foot off of there, your little straight stitch foot. And you want to put that forked arm up on the needle clamp first. You come in from behind, slide that forked arm between that needle clamp, and then you can ease it in and put it on your, your main presser foot bar. And I always kind of wiggle these as I tighten up that screw to make sure they're set in there all the way and are nice and snug. Then you want to bring your top, top thread down underneath. So I go and I do one loop, one stitch, and I've got black um, bobbin thread here. You can't quite see it very well, but I'm pulling on that bobbin thread to bring that through and we'll get all set to sew here. It'll take, grab that loop from underneath and then I can pull it under and I can start to sew. We're all set. Let's start with some puffing. Basically puffing is just a, using the ruffles 
for making creating a puff floor like a puffed sleeve or some kind of puffing down around a cuff or around a, the waist of a skirt and you're gonna here's we've got a single layer of fabric and I'm gonna slide this in between the blades so I'm between those two blue steel blades and I'm going up I'm gonna create this one single puff puffing line and get it all set in there where you want in the size seam you want you lower your presser foot bar and it starts to go and I'm starting with just kind of a medium depth uh, ruffle here you can see it grabbing that's that upper blade grabbing the only the upper blade moves now I'm tightening it down a little bit to make a deeper ruffle now it's grabbing a little more fabric so you can adjust how deep you want this ruffle with that adjustment screw. It's only that upper blade that moves and it's sliding on that lower plate, pinched down on that fabric. So it creates this little, little bite that gets sewn in. So this first line, the first few inches, is kind of a medium depth ruffle. And the last few inches is a really strong ruffle. You can kind of see the difference between the two. So that's all just adjustable however you want. And the back side, of course, is basically the same. So that's puffing. Now let's look at ruffling. Basically, a ruffle is, it would be a band of, of fabric or ribbon or lace that you would add to another piece. And here I've just got a flat piece of muslin fabric and I'm going to add a strip to the top of that. So we're going to create a ruffle. And the flat piece goes completely under the foot. So it's not going between those blades at all. It's going completely under the foot. And I'm going to be sliding that ribbon, that, that strip, in between the two blades. Now basically that bottom steel blade will protect the fabric from being grabbed with that upper toothed blade that creates the ruffle so it won't uh, impact that lower piece of fabric at all. It won't grab it at all. It's only on the feed dogs will move that but not the ruffler pieces, the ruffler blades. So lower our feed dog or lower our pressure foot here and we're going to just ruffle that one strip and leave the underside piece smooth. And you can see how it's doing that there. I'm just kind of lining up my edges and keeping things straight. See, it's creating quite a nice ruffle. Every little bite. So you would probably use this for ruffles around the bottom of a skirt or around a sleeve edge or around a cuff, around a baby bonnet, you know, things like that, around a pillow edge and make a nice little ruffled edge, a little band of ruffle. And here you can see that I've got a nice ruffle, deep ruffle, and it's on to that piece real nice and smooth underneath. So I've attached it. Now let's look at shearing a little bit, and it's quite a bit different in a way. This is what you do across typically a broad piece of fabric. And this little plate functions basically as uh, that lower blade does except you're going to be moving that lower blade so it's not used but it allows you to go all the way across that attachment going underneath it and not catching up against the the seam guide edge of that attachment because there is one on this attachment so you have to have this shearing blade covers part of the feed dogs but then leaves the, the back end of the feed dogs open put it on there nice and snug make sure those little that back end is all the way back because those feed dogs are going to move. Now I've put the foot on. The other thing I have to do is move this bottom blade forward so it's not touching the tooth part anymore. It's 
not going to be using that lower blade. That shearing blade is basically replacing the function of that lower blade, but allowing you to go across a broad piece of fabric. So you're putting your fabric completely under the entire foot. And now what's happening is that upper tooth piece, that upper tooth blade is pushing along using that bottom shearing plate to create the little creases, the little folds for the ruffle or for the shearing piece. Typically shearing you'll go a number of times, a number of rows, and uh, create this little decorative puckering type stitches. It's a real light fold. Those can be adjusted, of course, again with your adjustment screw. And here I'm going to do a second row. Just slide it under, and I'm just going to use that uh, that previous stitch as my guide. Drop my feed dogs down, go along the edge of that previous one. I'm in about maybe a half an inch or maybe three quarters of an inch from that uh, first line of stitch. And you're going to kind of see I'm trying to keep the, the piece as flat as I can and even as I can. And shearing, I suppose you'd see, you know, across a, a waistband type thing, um, other kind of decorative areas of a blouse or shirt. Seems like you don't see a lot of it. And most of what you see in today's clothing is, is elasticized. You use elastic um, instead of just straight thread. Well, they didn't, I don't think they had elastic thread back then in 1889. 1891. So here's a third line of stitching. And again, you kind of watch my fingers. I kind of walk, walk the existing folds through as even as I can. Kind of wants to curve on you, so you need to guide it along and just kind of take your time. Practice. All these attachments kind of need you need to use practice and see what you really want out of them and see if it's doing what you want to use and get your spacings and your sizes and your things the way you want them before you actually put them on garments and and projects these are your little scraps here we're going to put another fourth line in this piece of fabric happens to be a flannel it's a cotton flannel i found it kind of worked better um, some of the lighter fabrics I didn't get a lot of grab for some reason. And when you use your ruffler, it does say in the manual to tighten down your presser bar presser uh, pressure. So you want a lot of pressure down on this uh, so that little tooth thing can grab. So basically here you have it. That's what shearing kind of looks like, and it's just decorative for the most part. So have fun with your ruffler and your shearing and your puffer. <laughs>